Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Hensions. Um, I don't know, this is going to be a thing, recording outside, every video? I don't know, it's fun sometimes, whatever. Um, anyway, wanted to uh, get my review for the next episode of Zenkaiger up. This is episode 5, I'm pretty sure we're on now. Um, it was all about the sushi world. Um, main, main plot of it is Kaito's like really wrestling with the fact that... Uh, Vroom knows that his parents had been at the Toji Tendo Empire place, like, working with Ijirut at one point. But he doesn't know where they went. He really only ever heard their names. He doesn't know a lot of details. And Kaito kind of becomes obsessive about it and wants to find out anything kind of about it. So much so that in their first fight with the Sushi World monster, um, they, uh, he ends up kind of, like, basically getting himself and Juron stuck together in a sushi. That's what the sushi monster can do, the sushi world monster. <laughs> can like stick people to stuff together um as sushi like two people together or a person to a wall or whatever he wants to so he does it to Juron and Kaito and Kaito kind of is like really upset with himself because he let everybody down and was too obsessed and focused on trying to find his parents and not with the fight at hand where they could have defeated the monster um and the team is really actually kind of supportive of him which I like like they're like yeah you were but we understand like we get it um <clears throat> And we get this really funny scene in the beginning where we see where they sleep at. And, like, Juron, everybody sleeps in his room with him. But Juron has a bed, and so does Majin, and so does Vroon. But Gawan sleeps in a little kitty bed. <laughs> All, like, he's, like, humped up, hunched up with, like, his legs right here. Like, holding on to his legs. <laughs> in a little kitty bed. Beautiful. Um, but anyway, um, we also get the uh, other... Um, general guy the tank robot i can't remember what his name is exactly Bra brashitara or brushes something um and uh he helps out as well in this fight and in this in this in the fight in this one and in the episode in general for the plot um so a good chunk of it is juron and kaito stuck together and what i like so far that we've gotten is because they were our first two zen kaijers they've really done a good job at making them be super duper believable friends and i really like that um they seem to be very very close not that the rest of the team isn't close with kaito and has their own connection with him. But Juron definitely has, like, a, a real bro-type brother, you know, feel with Kaito. And I like that a lot. They really do a good job of really characterizing that and giving good dialogue for that. Um, but uh, he's talking to them about it. And they're, like, stuck in the park trying to figure out what to do. Because they're, actually they're stuck together on, like, a bench or something like that. And um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the rest of the team... Uh, decides to create sushi to lure out the sushi world monster. So um, Gawan is a cook, so he's helping them making sushi. The three of them actually are making it, and it lures the monster out. They transform together, and they say, "We three are Kikai Sentai Zenkaiju." It's super cool. Um, and uh, we get a go back and forth of that, and Kaito and Juron. And actually, Juron reveals that he also doesn't know where his family is. His own parents and his own family is missing too. Doesn't really make it clear if it's because of Toji Tendo. Or because of Kikaitopia and like the human world intersecting, but he makes that mention. So it's a nice little connection between the two of them. And he's dealing with the same thing that Kaito is, and uh, he essentially helps Kaito realize, like you know, yes, it's important that we search for your parents, find out where they are, what happened to them, but it's also important that we still are keeping people safe and saving the day as heroes. So I like that kind of a lesson of the day thing that's in it. Um, <clears throat> so the Sentai gears this time, oh my gosh, they use the Q Ranger gear, which. Um, is uh of course represented by lucky from um uh q ranger the red ranger um who gives them makes them super lucky essentially it gives them luck and uh because they all of a sudden they're the the three of those others and guys just go gawan vroom and majin are fighting the sushi world monster and um brashitara or whatever his name is the tank man um and they're getting their butts kicked and um they come like falling Juron and uh Kaito come falling out of the sky and like smash into him into the ground. I'm like, how'd you get here? And they talk about what happened. He tried to transform, but he grabbed the wrong gear and put in the Q Ranger gear, which made them lucky. And a bunch of series of events happened. This water hit them, which threw them this direction. They launched off of that, which got them onto a balloon. The balloon carried them real high. They dropped, fell into a truck, which drove them there, hit a bump through them. A bunch of goofy Sentai goofiness. I will say that although this season is a little more lighthearted and like zany and it's comedy and slapsticky and it's comedy it never gets in the way of the plot and it never gets in the way of the characterization and i love that it's always there just enough to make you laugh and then it moves on with itself and it goes forward with the plot or what they're trying to do with the character fantastic and i love that for that 
that's how you know you got a real good Sentai Season 2. If it has a funny kind of aesthetic to it and it can still use that to push the characters forward, awesome. So anyway, um, they end up transforming together. They're stuck together still, and they transform together, which is kind of funny, and uh, try to do their poses together, which is even funnier because they're like, Zenkaiser! Jura! <laughs> which I love. Um, but the other Sentai gear we get is the Rio Soldier gear, which I thought was awesome. It just basically gives a Rio Sulkin to Zenkaiser, who uses it to, um, he gets out of the sushi with it, and then he ends up using it, uh, I think that's what it does, or no, 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 I'm sorry. They actually fight together against the Sushi World monster, defeat it, then the Kudai test comes in, steps on the gear, and becomes, you know, the Sushi World giant monster version. He uses the Rio Sulkin to fight that monster for a bit before bringing out both mechas and, you know, taking it down. Um... But yeah, overall, a really, really good episode. Um, I probably, um, <clears throat> I think I like the other four better than this one. I think if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it like a strong 8 out of 10. Maybe a 7.5 or 8 out of 10. So a good episode. And it didn't feel like filler necessarily because it was still pushing the plot forward. But um, I, think we've, I think I'm just like a tiny bit spoiled with like the character-centric episodes we've gotten before today. Uh, not today, but when I watched the episode that once I got to this one, it wasn't set on one character or another. Well, I guess it kind of focused on Kaito and Jurons. So I guess that's not true. But anyway, in general, I really liked the episode. Not as much as the others, but it was still fantastic. Um, I really like what they were doing with the characters. I like that the slapstick, goofiness, jokey joke stuff didn't get in the way of the plot or the characterization. Um, the fights were awesome. Um, I'm loving the dialogue and the way that the team interacts with each other is really, really great. All the jokes hit and land are awesome. The effects are great. The Sentai gears are cool. Um, we do get a little interesting thing near the end. You see Ijirud looking like he's working on some kind of a device, which looks like a Geertlinger. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they revealed just after the episode. It's either in the episode premiere, the, the preview for next episode, which is, I guess, this garbage world of some kind, which Vroon is in heaven because he just wants to clean it. Um, and I think there's there's supposed to be a, like a human character that's that's part of Toji Tendo that he, could, he says that, that's right Ijirud says at the end of the episode this device will be very powerful and unstable who could I you know test it on I think I know just the right person and he's thinking of this apparently the character's name is Stacy and he seems to be kind of Bosco-esque like from Go Gokaiger if you're familiar with Gokaiger um I guess it's supposed to be from what we know of like rumors and speculation right now the Toji 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 Linger or Toji, Toji Geerlinger or something like that. It has its own name. It's basically a darker version of the Geertlinger. And what it does is instead of it summoning the teams, it actually summons uh, past Robos, past, past Mecha. So I think that's a really cool twist on the formula there. So we'll have to see how that goes in the next few episodes and if he stays evil or if he becomes two Kaiser or what's going to happen with that. But yes, yeah, so we're getting a whole new um, villain general type guy. I kind of wish they would have waited a little bit to reveal the person and who they, what they look like and everything, especially because we're getting two Kaiser reveals soon and, like, the episodes about him and his, you know, debut. Um, and I wish that we would have more time with uh, the other Tank General guy because Ijirud's gotten a pretty good amount of characterization, I would say, but the Tank guy has not. Spirit so Killer because I call him Tank Guy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so like I said, I'm really, really happy about Zen Kaiser. I think it's been a fantastic series so far. Every episode has made me laugh and smile and just, like, burst out laughing all the time and it's just a treat to watch you know it's super colorful vibrant bombastic energetic you know lots of good fight scenes the choreography for the fight scenes is great just overall a really good season i really enjoy it so like i said i would give it probably today's rating for this episode probably a good straight eight out of ten i thought i gave vroon's debut an eight and a half or something like that but anyway still a pretty good episode um, as far as any channel updates right now we're still in the midst of rider week um i have one more video coming out which is my uh, top five favorite primary common Riders. Um, and that'll be my last uh, common Rider video for the week for celebrating the 50th anniversary. My boy Zero One right there. He and Naruto represent. Um, so yeah, so I uh, got that coming. And uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely come up with some more video ideas and stuff like that besides just the episode reviews of Dino Fury and Zenkaiger. Um, definitely some more Henshin videos if I can. And pretty soon I have a Zenkaiger uh keychain coming. I think it should be here today. Um, which is uh, Thursday, April something, 8th, I think. Um, and then I also have the Die Ranger gear coming soon, which I probably will go on my TikTok to show that off in the Geertlinger, just because it's only one gear. Um, 
but yeah so again thank you guys so much for liking the content you know commenting when you can I, I, it'd be nice to get a few more comments but i'm happy with the few that i've gotten here and there um thank you guys for sharing the video watching to the end uh subscribing i'm i'm, I'm at 163 64 subscribers blows my mind to even have that many so i really am thankful for that um and yeah i hope you guys enjoy the content let me know what you guys think what did you guys think of episode five did you guys like the mushroom world episode did you guys not like it did you like the back and forth with kaito and juron um and overall the plot and everything um but as always i hope you guys enjoyed the episode here the review here and the video and uh stay hooked on tensions i'll talk to you guys later bye bye